You guys remember Y2K, right? Like the last apocalypse, nobody said they're sorry when that shit didn't happen. <laughs> like, I like to think someone's a redneck still alive in a Y2K bunker. Like living off cans of beans and wondering how friends ended. <laughs> Hey, it's Jasmine. I'm here at the Dallas Entertainment Journal, and I'm speaking with Mark Agee today. Very excited. Now, Mark, you are a stand-up comedian and a writer, and yes, you kind of got your comedy start here in Dallas, right? That is true. Yes, ma'am. Very cool. So, one thing I think is interesting is people talk about Dallas as being a really great, like, booming city, but uh, earlier this year, a report came out saying that Dallas was one of the least funny cities in the United States. Do you remember reading about I that? I saw that. But, they, yeah, they were, like, ranking improv, like, improv improvisational comedy, I think, or oh. it's weird. I'm not sure they did that. Plus, there was, like, like who posts the most memes or something? It was part of the part of the. I don't think you're a funnier city by posting like your mom posting memes on Facebook. I don't think what do you think is a good qualifier of a good comedy scene? Like, how do you decide which city has a good scene versus another one? Stage time. Mm -hmm. I feel like if, uh, if people have an appetite for comedy, it creates it allows it to be more shows. So if the, if the city has a ton of shows, it means people are going out and watching shows, mm -hmm. and that's a good way to tell. I think. So like a real appreciation for the audience and yeah. for comedy. Mm -hmm. You can definitely see that. So while you were here in Dallas, did um, what were some of the things that you did to kind of bring yourself to the next level? Because you've been on Last Comic Standing mm -hmm. and just like a, a whole bevy of other shows. Like what did you do while you were here to get yourself to the next level? Um, uh, bomb a lot. That's really the key. You can't be, it's like it's a metaphor for life. It's all about comedy. Like you, have to be, you have to be willing to be terrible at something to, to ever be good at it, I think. And to be terrible over and over and over again. Uh, you actually were just about to touch on my my next favorite question to ask uh -huh. comedians, which is, what's the absolute worst gig you've ever had? Your hell gig? Um, there've been so many. Um, <laughs> I did. I mean, uh, you do random things at like a 16 year old's birthday party once. That was not fun because I don't even know what to talk to kids about, but I paid money I needed. So mm -hmm. um, I did um, once. A guy pulled a knife on me because I called his wife a mean word because she was being a, a mean word. You and just pulled the knife out? And yeah, like, yeah. And I was going to hit him with the mic stand. His old, this is not a friendly, this is oh. a family friendly website. <laughs> it was it's a bar a, show. Mostly adults visit yeah. this website. It was, in, it was in Arlington. It was a bar, it was a bar show in Arlington. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that is interesting. So on a lighter note, what do you, <laughs> on a, um, a lighter, happier note, what would you say is the best advice you've ever gotten for your career? Um, you don't have to be, the best comedy advice I ever heard was you don't have to be right. Meaning like, you can argue like creatively, you can argue for whatever dumb idea you have, even if it's wrong. Even if you know it's wrong, you'd be like, ah, here's the thing, here's the thought I had. It's the dumbest thing I ever thought, but here's a, you know, maybe this is true. Maybe somebody feels like it. As long as you acknowledge the audience feels like you know you're full of um, stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> the audience knows you're full of stuff. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm following. As long as you know you're not presenting, you're not preaching to them. Uh huh. You know, like I can do, I can do like pro gay marriage jokes in Oklahoma City as long as I don't feel like. I'm a guy coming at them, yelling at them for being against it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a guy doing jokes about the topic. Just don't get them against you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But as long as you, you can talk about what you talk about. So you actually make a good point, and with recent things that have happened, with of course, in France, with the mm -hmm. the, the cartoonist. Um, just lately, it seems like whenever there's some big hot topic that happens, a comedian might like alienate their fan base or do something wrong with one tweet. That's all it takes. Yeah. Do you feel like the internet has has created like a bad environment for stand up or is oh, it just more of a challenge? It's terrible. Like if you're if you get into comedy nowadays, your career is going to end because of a tweet. It's going to end. Because something's gonna happen. It happens even like people turn so quickly because you're not allowed to uh, you're not allowed to make a bad joke anymore. Mm -hmm. Like if a joke fails, you're now a bad person. Because it's in print, somewhat in print, and it's like people can screenshot it and it lasts forever. Or it's on stage and people film it with their cell phones, and then you see comics like writing apologies like to bloggers who got their feelings hurt at a show. It's like, but you can't take a joke out of context. The guy, like the context, isn't just the setup. It's also a guy being in a comedy club, being on stage, and the first twenty minutes he spent warming up to say that joke and get you on his side, mm -hmm. so he can say some really awful stuff. You know, that's part of the context of it. You can't be like, he said this, this one sentence. You're like, oh, that guy's an evil racist monster. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that's an intense thing. I, it's also a fear for you sometimes that maybe, maybe people are laughing at the wrong thing. I remember when Dave Chappelle quit, and there's a lot of articles mm -hmm. about it, and he talked about how he felt like his racial message was misinterpreted. Yeah. Is that, is that, a, is that a fear for a lot of working comics? It's like how you interpret it? I, there was a joke I used to do. It was like, I, 
years ago, back when I was still trying to do weird stuff, I was like, it was like ironically racist. Or I was trying to make, I was trying to make fun of racist by presenting a dumb argument, right? Mm -hmm. And I was opening for, I'll say it because Polly Shore here, and I did the, I did the joke, and the audience clapped at the setup, and I was like, not. I was like, I, I can't do that joke anymore. They don't know. I, I don't want the wrong people getting it. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying where yeah. it's like they're like I definitely not at all on the same caliber, but like something with the N word. And I'm like, you guys are laughing because you like hearing the N word, yeah. and not the point of this guy thought it was okay to say the N word. Yeah. Like yeah. it's a, it's a scary. It's a, it's a tightrope to walk on. So yeah. specifically for you, I was reading that you had worked on the uh, the Chesnick Offensive. Yeah. Which was a show that kind of had a big issue with that the shark party thing. Yeah, yeah. What's it like to be a part of a show and then it's just Where not on the death air threats for, Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll show, if you don't know the con, like they did uh, that was the season before I worked on it, but they did a joke about this whole segment about a guy getting in New Zealand getting eaten by a shark. Now apparently New Zealanders get eaten by sharks a lot. It's a very sensitive issue there. Why am I laughing? Yeah, it's, I it's funny, know, right? It's, I don't, well, I'm a terrible person. Yeah. Anyway, so this town, <laughs> this new, this whole, the whole country of New Zealand wrote letters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's really like you. You guys almost cause an international incident. That's yeah. kind of yeah. That's the sick part of being a comic. Is a little piece of you's like it's kind of cool though. Like yeah, you know, it's like you know what? Like if the guy get eaten by a shark, like if I get eaten by a shark, please make fun of me. Like, I'm dead, what do I care? My family, how about I don't turn on Comedy Central if your dad just got eaten by a shark? You know, it's not, it's not the rest of the world's, I, I, don't, I don't mean to seem insensitive, bad things happen to everybody, and maybe don't, just don't don't turn on the, the Jeselnik offensive the day your dad got eaten by a shark. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, actually, when Jeselnik was here, he had this joke about uh, how he does, he's not worried about the victim seeing his tweets because victims are not tweeting. Yeah. <laughs> They've got victim things to do. Yeah. Uh, it's really just the people who are like overly or hypersensitive or want to start fights. But yeah. Or just they imagine they want to take care of a hypothetical person that doesn't exist. They're like, I'm the good person, so I'm defending them. I'm the good one. It's like, but they don't, the person doesn't care. You're, you're, you're protecting someone who doesn't, doesn't even know this is a thing. Right? That's exactly true. So as a writer, I'm really curious. I know you're writing for a new show that's coming out on FX. Mm -hmm. um, what can you tell me about it? Because I know there's like there's not a lot of information out there about it. What is the show about? Um, it is uh, Tone Bell, who's uh, on the headliner on stage right now. It, it will be a pro hopefully be the lead in it. We're writing it together. It's about um, the best way to explain it. It's an interracial. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. I guess would be the way that okay. way to describe it. So just kind of like a like character driven kind of about like is it really any plot or is each episode going to kind of stand on its own um we, we want to be like uh, uh, this is really inside baseball but is a uh, um um not serialized as episodic as like standalone mm -hmm. i want to make a human cartoon i want to make a, i want to be really weird and crazy okay right? so uh, if, if a character like like in south park how kenny dies and then the next episode, he's back alive. I love stuff like where it's improbable yeah. and it does not matter. Yeah. If you saw last week's episode, it doesn't it's matter. a whole other thing on its own. Yeah. That probably allows for a lot of freedom as a writer, right? In theory, if they let us do it, we'll see how crazy they'll let us get. But like, we're doing the idea is generally it's four dudes from different like walks of life, all different races and socioeconomic backgrounds, and, and in, a, in a place where none of them fit. And the idea is that it, there'll be all sorts of different misunderstandings that'll drive the. the the plot. It sounds exciting. It sounds like something fun and new to watch. So mm -hmm. I love asking comedians about their favorite comedians because if you talk to the normal typical person they're going to name the most big name person. Who do you think is one of the best but maybe most underrated comedians? Um, let's see. So um, uh, Sean Patton I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of. I love Sean Patton and Rory Scovel. Those are the two guys I recommend you guys teach yourselves about. Shane Moss Mm -hmm. It's great, and Chad Daniels. Those are the four guys I would say to go watch. So four guys to look out for. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I don't want any to pick a lady. And I'm being very. Those are four <laughs> white guys. Too. You felt it. I was like. Tom I'm... Bell. Go watch Tom Bell. Like my my my, my one of my best friends. You should watch. You were about to say it. my black best friend. Right? Yeah, my black best friend oh, Tom Bell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is he, are you friends with him? So you have a black best friend. Like in case you get an argument with black people, you can like call. No, no. He's gonna vouch for me. Oh, I don't think. Uh, I, hope, I hope I'm not getting a lot of those arguments where I need to be. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know. Get at a podium and bring out a black guy to vouch for me for you know probably for a tweet I made or something like that. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Oh, but I didn't mean to stop you there because you're talking about and you almost mentioned what was it like your favorite female comedians? Uh, Christella Alonzo is a good friend of mine. She has a show on ABC called Christella, uh, and more people should watch it. It's really fun. It is really funny, and that's so exciting because she she's not from Dallas, but she did live here for a little bit, like and worked from, in this club, right? Yeah, she worked the door here. Uh, that's when I met her. She she was started doing open mics, and now she has her own TV show on ABC. She's she's from the Valley here in uh, the um, 
Rio Grande Valley. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but she, yeah, she started doing comedy here. So similar to me, I think she, she her family moved here after uh, when she was like 20 or so. so. It's still really exciting to just see like people who can become alumni of basically where we're sitting right now and kind of move forward. So that's really exciting. Uh, what is next for you, <laughs> and what are you excited about in the coming year? Well, um, I'll, I'm. We're writing our show, which hopefully will be on TV. Fingers crossed. And then we're uh, uh, my 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 fiance and I uh, wrote a script together. We're trying to sell, and we're getting married in June. So that's what I'm excited about this year. That's okay. So I noticed on your IMBD there was a show called "I Want to Date a Comedian." Yes. What you did? What was that about? I couldn't find anything on it, but I was curious. Well, never watch it if it's on. Uh, <laughs> check your local listings and then block that channel. Uh, it, it was just a reality show. Um, I was single at the time. It, it, all reality shows are fake, right? So they send they they have three actresses pretending to be girls who want to date, and then I, I I go on this fake date. I think we played skee ball, <laughs> right? It did a it was like a Chuck E. Cheese thing, and they they have questions I'm supposed to ask them. It was supposed to be comedians that they, they had me tell them jokes. It was like doing my act for like in a Chuck E. Cheese to three girls who were fake laughing because they were getting paid. But it was reality TV is the devil, guys. Don't that was the that. creepiest setup in the entire world. I just heard it like three girls in a Chuck E. Cheese have to hear your jokes and yeah. then they want to date with you. Like, I just, that's the. I never got my date. I should still get my date, right? Did you? No, you didn't I really picked, get your I date. I picked this very nice girl. I think I, we got, I think we became Facebook friends and she got married after that. I think she was engaged while she did. That's how fake reality <laughs> TV is. If she's engaged like this rich producer guy, she's an actress who's pretending to be a girl who wins a date with me. I was really hoping you were going to tell me you met your fiance on the no, show. No. I was really hoping for that. Like I was, I'm I, naive like that. What if I went and claimed my date now? I was like, I'm sorry, sir, your wife owes me a date from a game show. Do it like <laughs> just show up while they're out at dinner, and like yeah. if there's like a physical certificate, then you can be like end of date, like just pause their date yeah. and then start your own. What, what if I went to her wedding like graduate style and bang, we do banged on the window, object? <laughs> like, yes, this reality show contestant owes me a date from 2011. That would be just a whole. <laughs> Their level of creepy. That is really funny. So you said you said your fiance is a writer too, right? An actress, yeah. An actress. Okay. So did you guys meet out there? Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I always like to hear about how people who are in the same kind of fields um, have relationships and things like that. And, and some people say that like two comedians can't work. They can't go to law. Like, have you ever heard any like terrible stories of comedy couples or ones that have worked out? Um, a, I know a bunch of both. A bunch of both. Yeah, I think it's just relationships are hard. I don't know if there's a rule. You know, whatever. Everybody makes their own stuff work their own way, you know. For like, me, it, for me, it works to have somebody going, you know, doing the same thing. They have understanding. Mm -hmm, same kind of thought process about their jobs and the same kind of commitment level to it. Same suffering, same the same foxhole, you know, that kind of suffering. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell our viewers, like maybe how to how to find out more about you, your social media plugs? Uh, follow me on Twitter at Mark A G M A R K A G E E, and uh, that's that's enough. I'm on Instagram too, same Mark underscore A G, I think. Awesome. Well, with the Dallas Entertainment Journal, I'm Jasmine Ellis.